How does a county become a home? Where do strangers turn into family? Diverse culture, rich history. When the beach comes calling, you answer. Charlotte County is more than a place, more than a people. It's something crafted by an experience bigger than you and me. As this land has aged, its beauty remains the same. People come and go, but the purpose found on this land will forever make you belong. So here we are in 2021 and we're celebrating the centennial of Charlotte County and we're looking back on these past 100 years and saying, how, what has happened here? What, how much has changed? How much is the same? I literally felt that this is like the most idyllic part of the country. All communities don't make it 100 years. My husband's from a small place in Missouri and it's died, but here it's still vibrant. It's, it's very long and buried how they got here, but I'm glad they glad they were successful eventually. It was quite a feat that that five counties were kind of split apart and Charlotte County became one of one of them. The first pioneers to settle Charlotte County were actually here before the Civil War. Uh, however, you're not going to see major settlements, the ones that we know today, uh, until after 1865 when the war concludes. So for example, uh, you have the settlement of Charlotte Harbor by the late 1860s, early 1870s. You have Inglewood, the first families that are in what is now Inglewood were out there by the mid 1870s and then you have the founding of Punta Gorda. And so by the time that Charlotte County is officially created in 1921, there are several existing communities that are here of roughly, give or take, uh, around 3,500 to 4,000 people. My family initially came to Charlotte County actually in 1885. One of my ancestors was a surveyor. He headed the survey team um, that was created by, by the, the future governor, Albert Gilchrist. And that survey team brought the railroad from Bartow to Punta Gorda. The same ancestor, he actually made the first um, religious service in the county. So it was actually both Christian and Jewish at the same time. It's the site of where Bethel um, Methodist Church is now. And that became, that was the first church service and it went on. And also um, just involved with a lot of, um, like you say, just very involved in civic affairs. And also from the standpoint of him being involved with having like oranges and bulbs and you know, the business people were in back in those days. At the very beginning, um, African-Americans, African-Americans actually co-founded the town to a point where even it was incorporated by both. Um, you had always had a very strong business community. A.C. Frizzell moved here in 1918, put together a lot of real estate and eventually sold about 90,000 acres to what became Mackle Brothers, and which all then became General, uh, General Development Corporation, and, that, and that's Port Charlotte. After 1945, Charlotte County is still relatively small. We are still talking uh, tens of thousands, not hundreds of thousands. So this is going to change very dramatically in, 19, in the 1950s. Port Charlotte was being developed, I was, I was young. But it was, I mean, it was amazing. 
you know, to see all these houses going up. And, all, and I think one thing that I thought was funny as a kid was, you know, they built the roads first. So there were all these roads to nowhere out in the, in the outer parts of Port Charlotte. We came in 1959. My dad was retired military, and that's when Mackle Brother was running up north, all the ads about $10 down and buy a lot and buy a house. So he came down here to retire. And are you familiar with the New York section right off of, uh, that's where we party in high school, the New York section. It was nothing but woods. It was originally set up as a small community where this was going to be for um, older folks, that this, not just retirees, but, e but even people who hadn't retired, but looking to escape the cold, right? And this was meant to be affordable living. This was meant to be uh, a beautiful living, right? That you are within walking or, or short driving from Charlotte Harbor, the Peace River, uh, beaches, right? All of this was touted as part of the, the reason why you should move to Port Charlotte. And, and I think it's interesting when you look at the General Development Corporation brochures that, were, that were, were being sent out to all parts of the country, you can see that. That's what they're pushing. What are the pictures that they show? They're showing the beaches, the sand, of course, right? But they're also showing uh, older people in communities. They're showing people gathered for example, at the Cultural Center in Port Charlotte. They're showing people in neighborhoods with, you know, where you know everyone and where you can walk to shops and things like that. Just like the early pioneers here, when they came here 100 years and settled in all these little mackerel houses and so forth, and they built this Cultural Center was one of the first big things that happened in Charlotte County. And you think of, uh, they had classes here and, and it's, it's, you know, it was a tremendous asset to this community and it still is and always will be, I think. It seemed to be the right balance um, coming from the big city. Um, knew that we would never get there, but um, the growth was good. I mean, even seeing the, the vacant lands um, in the neighborhood, we used to hang out, play neighborhood football games as those started to get developed with houses. Um, we knew that there, there was going to be some great uh, potential there. In the late 70s, early 80s, uh, there wasn't a day that something wasn't being built in Charlotte County. It, the roads were starting to become much like they are now. Uh, things like Kings Highway was a two-lane road. Right now it's, it's a major artery of this community. What's really happened is the remarkable growth and we were experiencing, we had the three major developers uh, booming at that time. General Development Corporation, Punta Gorda Isles, building all the stuff in Deep Creek and Burnt Store area, and also Rotunda. So yeah, it was, it, that's the growth, is the uh, tremendous uh, explosion of growth is what I've experienced. Whether it's in, you know, Inglewood area where I live or in Punta Gorda, this is a very small community for 185,000 people. Um, and you, you go a lot of places, you know a lot of people, and you start learning about how um, the relationships are, they're, they're, they have tentacles, they go through all parts of our community. And I think it's exciting. For me and my family, it's always been about relationships. Um, you know, we've got great historic buildings, great uh, rec centers, great amenities here. Um, but it always comes back to the people. I've been lucky enough to have been, you know, mentored, coached uh, by some great folks throughout the years. And um, it's, it, for me, it's great to be able to give back some way, somehow. A very homegrown community. I came back, many of my, my classmates came back, either teach here or lawyers here, doctors here, things like that. And, and the only way you can guarantee people will continue to come back to a retirement community is to make it a place they want to raise their family, and this community has absolutely done that. It's, it's a cycle, and you want that next generation that are coming out of our local schools. You hope, you hope they have those ties to the community and they'll stay here much the same way I did. I honestly just want to thank Charlotte County. Um, I know a lot of people growing up want to leave this place, and admittedly I was one of them, um, but I look back now being involved in the community. Um, I coach youth basketball now, and I'm just so thankful for the people that poured into me during those times. Um, I actually coach with my youth basketball coach from Harold 15 years ago. Um, and what a full circle that is to be able to impact the community. Um, 
and be a part of something bigger than yourself and give back to the place that gave so much to you. Let's face it, this is a beautiful, safe, clean, wonderful community to raise kids. And, uh, and we knew this was the place to, to, to drop anchor and, and, uh, and basically you know, grow the family, but also grow the business. If you can't blend history and the future together a little bit or save history in certain areas, you're gonna forget your past and you're gonna, you're gonna lose those moments of things that are elderly people. And I was always brought up to respect the elderly. Our elders are our past, and if we don't remember their stories and remember the things that happened, we could make mistakes in the future. So the history is very, very important, especially in our community. It's not just about old buildings, whether it's a Punta Hotel or the fact that we had a train trussle going out to the phosphate docks out on Boca Grande or any of this stuff. It's important as part of history. But knowing how the land is transformed from ranching or lemon groves or, or what have you to what we are today, I think it's really important for people to understand. We need to remember all of our past, plan for our future, um, bring it all together, be able to tell stories for the, the children in the future, um, have pictures, have memories. Part of our local history is part of our lives forever and it needs to be part of our children's lives as well. I think it's important to know where you came from. I think it's something you should never forget so to see how this community has grown over over that time also allows you to make sure you can move forward in in the right way. Uh, so I think it's important to celebrate those accomplishments, those, those moments in our, in our community that have been positive and maybe sometimes a little less than positive. Uh, it, it enables you to move forward in a way that will benefit this community, not just today, but another hundred years from now. I think that's important. No matter what religions we are, all of us need to come together and be part of the life of this community to be stand shoulder to shoulder and support it, um, be able to um, bring it to the future fu fruition of um, beauty that the, the future generations would be able to support and be able to enjoy. And the people that volunteer, not just at the YMCA or on the veterans groups or at the Legion, or puts on the boards and the committees, that. That's what helps pulls us together and, and you know, and, and really makes us an effective, cohesive unit to serve all the community. You know, we have some incredible things here in Charlotte County, but it's really about the people that live and work and play here that make it so fantastic. You know, there's so many wonderful events that Charlotte County has throughout the year. The Air Show, Waterfest, uh, City of Punta Gorda block parties. You know, there have been so many fun events that have gone on in Charlotte County. Charlotte County's been discovered. Um, you know, we're, we're an affordable waterfront community, probably the most affordable waterfront community left in the state of Florida. And, you know, we've been discovered for all the good things that we have, quality of life, um, waterfront amenities, access to, to, to the water, um, just a, a high quality standard of life. So I think we're going to experience even more uh, people transitioning to, to Florida in general but when they recognize and discover Charlotte County, and that's really what it boils down to now, uh, they, they, they're amazed. They're amazed at how affordable it is to live here, how friendly we are, how clean we are, and how safe we are. I really believe that. And I think that will be a major attractor. So we're gonna see, we're gonna see growth, and I think that's gonna be one of the primary challenges of, of the county government is providing the services for that growth that I, I think is coming. And I believe that's the desire of our Board of County Commissioners to make Charlotte County the best place that it possibly can be. And in my mind and in my heart, not just for you and me, but for our children and our grandchildren as we move into the future. Wow, I think that we need to really appreciate ourselves. I think that we need to give ourselves really a, a pat on the back or an applause for really creating a wonderful community. I think this is one of the rare places when people come here they move here because they realize how wonderful it is here. And I think celebrating 100 years of really creating a wonderful space is 
is necessary. To recognize that we've been through the ups and downs over 100 years, uh, but I really think we're punctuating the fact that Charlotte County has arrived. History must be made before it is told. It is made in moments we are given. It is a promise to look back on. It's something we inherit, but we also get to choose what mark we'll leave on it. When we look back from where we come from, we seek what we are living for. We are here for ourselves and for something more. From this moment on, we create what will be remembered. The past 100 years, we will not forget. We will keep the pictures and frame the memories forever as we honor our past and celebrate our future.